Welcome to Life Devotions. And thank you for joining me today. Don't be deceived. You have eternal life. It's the title of this devotion. Hear me say it again. Don't be deceived. You have eternal life. 1 John chapter 2, verse 25 says, And this is the promise that He has promised us, eternal life. 1 John 2, 23. These things... I have written to you concerning those who try to deceive you. Again, and this is the promise that he has promised us eternal life. These things I've written to you concerning those who try to deceive you. You know, the battle with the devil often is that he pricks you in the flesh thorns you in the flesh, if you want to use that term from 2 Corinthians 12, to make you conscious of self. When you're living in the knowledge of the heavenly life, when you're living in the knowledge of the Father and the Son, then the enemy will prick you in the flesh through something. And then you feel the pain of your weak human nature when you've been living in the comfort of the Holy Spirit and are, are, and are not aware in that comfort of your weak human nature but you feel holy and without blame in His love through the Spirit of life in Christ in you. That is the knowing of the Father and the Son. And then all of a sudden you get pricked in the flesh by something and pop, you, you're back into that consciousness of self and it can be excruciating. And that is an, a demonic fiery dart, an attack for which is needed the shield of faith to quench. As it says in Ephesians 6, that you have to quench this fiery dart. You have to extinguish that feeling of self and say, no, I know I am in Christ a new creation, no more in condemnation. Here in the grace of God I stand and it's good even to sing it. I am a new creation, no more in condemnation. Here in the grace of God I stand. Oh, what a beautiful little song. Friends, that you have to worship when you feel that sting in your flesh, when you feel that pain of your failing nature, and you lift up your hands and you say, Father, I'm so grateful you've made me accepted in the beloved according to the riches of the glory of your grace. I am holy and without blame in your love in Christ. Father, I believe, Father, I worship you. And you begin to worship and the Holy Spirit springs up like a fountain within you, as Jesus said in John 4. And that whole feeling of self evaporates in the light of his presence being made manifest in you. And you know I live because he lives. And this life I have in this mortal flesh is not my own. It's the life of the Son of God in me who loved me and gave himself for me, Galatians 2.20. And you have to abide, abide. You have to abide not to be deceived. Don't be deceived. You have eternal life. You're not deceived by that demonic attack that makes you feel the temporal. For the temporal mind of this life, friends, can only be overcome by being renewed inwardly daily, 2 Corinthians 4, 16. It says being renewed in the inward man daily, we do not look at the things that can be seen that are temporary, for we have a much greater weight of glory awaiting us. And that weight of glory is expanding itself in its revelation in us. Meditate on that in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 16 through 18. And friends, I charge you in the name of the Lord that you keep abiding in Christ so you are not deceived, that you abide in His promise that is made yea and amen in you, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. That, that, that promise that you have eternal life in Christ is what allows you, 2 Peter chapter 1, to be a partaker of the divine nature. It says, we now have been given everything for living a holy, godly life as we have escaped the corruption that's in the world through lust by becoming partakers of the divine nature according to precious promises. These promises, they find their yea and amen in us. They become to manifest in us, these promises. They begin to reveal themselves in us, these promises. 
through the divine life of the Son of God, who is the fulfillment of all those promises. All these promises speak about Christ, and in Him, all of them are yea and amen in us. We experience who He is and what He has. He has it for us. And he is it for us. Jesus is eternal life, 1 John 5, 20. Jesus gives eternal life. He who has the Son has life, 1 John chapter 5, verse 10. And, and you live in that reality through the Son. He's the surety of it. He's the, ma the giver of it, the maintainer of it, and the perfecter of this life in us. So you don't get deceived. But then, perhaps not least, you know, friends, we all can sometimes fall prey to something by which we charge each other after the flesh. Paul says in, in 2 Corinthians 5, 14 through 20, oh, it's all so powerful. He says, the love of Christ in verse 14 compels me that if one died, all died, therefore we live no longer for ourselves because we now know anyone in Christ is a new creation, verse 17. We judge no one after the flesh, but we all can sometimes judge people after the flesh. And that could be a stronghold. That could be something that keeps repeating itself that any occasion that they act after that human nature, that charge in you, that charge springs up in accusation. And I don't know about you, I don't wanna have any charge against any man. I wanna love all men and not have any charge against any man. It says in Romans 8, there is no charge against God's elect. <coughs> God is it who justified. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. For we see him not only as the one who died for us, but furthermore is also risen interceding for us. Who could ever separate us from his great love? Read it there in Romans chapter 8. My dear friends, it's so important that we don't judge one another after the flesh, but know one another. Let me close this devotion with you from Hebrews chapter 10. This little scripture I'm going to read to you it used to so verberate in my fellowship with the Lord. It's still there, but there's many other things now that the Holy Spirit is working in me. But this, it lives in there. It's Hebrews chapter 10, verse 32, listen to it. But I recall the former days in which after you were illuminated, you endured a great struggle with suffering. You were able to stay steady despite the trials of this life because of the revelation that now was living inside of you. Partly while you be, were made a spectacle both of reproaches to relations, partly while you became a companion of those who were so treated, for you had compassion on me and my chains and joyfully accepted the plundering of your goods, knowing that you have a better and enduring possession for yourselves in heaven. Now listen to it. Therefore do not cast away your confidence which has great reward for you have need of endurance that after you've done the will of God you may receive the promise for yet a little while and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith but if anyone draws back my soul has no pleasure in them but we are not of those who draw back to perdition but of those who believe in the saving of the soul. Oh, my friends, live in that constant revelation of Christ. I have the Father, I have the Son, I abide in Him, He abides in me. I live in the revelation of the Father and the Son, hallelujah. I live in that divine communion and you do not <coughs> allow yourself to, to lower, lower. Let me close with this little example to make the point that you've heard me share before. I was sitting in the airport of Moscow in the 90s when I had preached in the far east, far above Siberia in a place called Blagovyshensk. And in those days, the only way to get back to Britain, you flew from Blagovyshensk to Krasnyas, from Krasnyas to Moscow, Moscow to London. And I, I had traveled a long way and I'm sitting there at the airport drinking my cup of tea and I was completely conscious of the heavenly life. I absolutely was not conscious of the world. I was in it, but not of it. And like an elevator, 
I could feel myself become conscious of the world and all the people and dressing and whatever, whatever, whatever. And I said in my spirit, oh, no, Father, no, Father, I'm not of this world. I'm not of this world, Father, no, Father. And whoom, the elevator went back up and I was conscious of the heavenly life. And the Father spoke to me and said, I'm upholding you with my own righteousness. I do not believe that it is possible to not be snared by the deception of this world that makes you feel self-conscious without this, what I'm saying again. I do not believe it is possible not to be snared living in this world, the deception that's in this world from the consciousness of self without this. I don't believe it's possible. I believe only if we keep abiding in Him, we keep acknowledging the Father through the Son that His righteousness upholds us in that communion of the Father and the Son and that what He has in the Father is what He keeps revealing in us and that's what causes causes the elevator to stay, stay above the fog of this world and all of its deceptive forces that makes us indulge in self instead of the light in the Father and how we need that today. Amen. Have a good day.